hi guys and welcome back to my channel if you are new hi hello and welcome and if you're not new what's popping i know it's been a minute since i've done an introduction where my face is fully beat but with today's episode being a beginner makeup tutorial i just wanted to show you guys the completed look this is the look that you all are gonna achieve if you would like to see and learn this beginner makeup tutorial keep on watching also don't forget to like comment subscribe and share it with a friend hit that notification bell so that you know every time i upload keep on watching don't mind this eye is red i scratched it my bad we're gonna do a beginner friendly makeup as well as some do's and don'ts where it regards to your makeup so as you can see my brows are not done no this is not my detailed brow look but i'm still going to highlight how i do my brows for this beginner friendly makeup look okay i'm going to take my angled brush i got this from color listen i have this eons i do understand i'm not living eons but yeah yeah my drift i'm going to take my brow gel from ellie girl now what you do is you outline your brow shape what you don't do is have division signs this is not a math class honey i remember seeing someone brows they were like literally the division sign all it was missing was numbers we not about that life that not cute okay we're following our brow shape we start with the bottom You also don't want to be heavy-handed. Marker brows is not of God. Take your time with your brows, okay? Because your brows is the first thing people see. This is what frames the face. You can also use a spoolie or mascara wand. This is a clean mascara wand or spoolie. You get them right in Pennywise to help groom your brows or to distribute the product evenly. And if you make any mistakes, we can correct that later. So you see how giant size I end up drawing on these? The next thing you do is fill them. Also, we do not like boxed brows. I don't want to see no square in front of here, okay? So what I would do is take my angle brush and just brush it up. Or you can use your finger to lighten the beginning. Square brows ain't cute, honey. It's not cute. Since this side looks much bigger than this side, I'm going to correct that using concealer. Now you wanna get a concealer that is a shade lighter because it also helps with giving your brow a bit of a highlight. And you don't wanna be too light-handed with the amount of concealer you apply because you don't want it to be looking like if you're running out. And we don't want it to look like if you don't know how to do the thing proper. I mean, as beginners, but you could still nail it though. I'm going to use this LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Medium Bisque. It is not as bright as my Bisque shade. Look at the difference. Two totally different shades. I know I usually use the much brighter one, but because this is a beginner's class, I'm gonna make things easier for you guys. If you find the concealer you have too close to your skin tone, just get one that's a little lighter this is how it looks then i'm going to take a flat concealer brush dip into that and clean it up now that the bottom of my brows are concealed 
I'm going to use foundation to clean the top of my brows. I don't use concealer. It's my preference. I prefer to use the foundation that I'm going to apply to my skin. Some people prefer to use the concealer they use underneath above. I don't. I do not believe in halo brows. I don't think it's cute. So I resort to my foundation. Foundation I'm going to use is my Maybelline Superstay in the shade 330, which is Toffee. This is how the foundation looks, so you see how much lighter the concealer is to my foundation. I'm going to use the same concealer brush and start to clean that up. To ensure that your brow comes out as close to how you want it, take your time. I mean, if it is all you have time to do is one thing, Make sure it's your brows. So now that the brows are complete, the next thing we're going to move on to is the eyes. Because I used this concealer just to highlight my brow, I'm gonna bring it down onto my entire lid so that it acts like an adhesive or an eyeshadow primer for my eyes. I'm using this dome shape crease brush to blend out the concealer onto my eyes. This is to ensure that I have an even surface so that when my eyeshadow goes on, it is effortless. Sometimes all it is wonder, why my eyeshadow don't look so? You didn't blend your base properly. It's okay if you come out onto the rest of the face and extend past the eyes because that is going to get covered with foundation later on. We're going to use my one eyeshadow trick. I tend to teach that in my beginner class. This is where you use one eyeshadow onto your eyes and somehow it, it, it looks so good. To do that, I'm going to use the Bossed and Bougie palette. One of my subscribers had commented asking how I would have done my last eyeshadow look. I used the Bossed and Bougie palette. I'm going to reach for this brown shade here called Gold Stone. And I'm going to take a densely packed brush just because I want to pack on as much of the eyeshadow as possible. So I dab into it here and then I pack it onto the lid and I keep doing that. You gotta remember to dip again, okay? Don't just dip into the eyeshadow once and expect to see color pay off. I'm only going to pack it onto my lid. Now it's time to blend out the edges. So to do that, I'm gonna use small circular motion just to evenly disperse the eyeshadow higher up so that it gives a blown out finish. It looks rich to the bottom and blown out to the top. I'm not going to add any more eyeshadow product. I'm just going to use what remained on the brush. You can use any eyeshadow of your choice, preferably a matte shade. What I'm going to do next is just take another blending brush and just set the concealer under my brows. You can use your face powder or you can use an eyeshadow shade that is close to your complexion. When you do that, it also helps with the blending. If you felt like you've lost some product, just go back in with the first brush and blend it upwards. You don't want to have the eyeshadow going all the way to your brows. Sometimes a blown out look truly makes your eyes look blended and like if you're putting in real work and you didn't do much you just use one eyeshadow <laughs> 
I can't give sweet eye. You also don't want to, when you're packing on the eyeshadow, don't have it too low because you want people to see it when you open your eyes. And people's gonna be like, how did you get that eye look? And you're gonna be like, one eyeshadow, honey, one eyeshadow. And that's that where that is concerned. The next thing we're going to do is do a little bit of eyeliner. We're not gonna do a full wing today. We're just going to line the eyes. You can make it look thin as possible, or you can make it look a little thicker than normal. So I think I'm gonna go a little thick, but I will show you where we do it a little thin, and then I will make it bigger. So you can reach for your gel liner, your gel pencil, or your liquid liner, whichever one is preferable to you. I usually recommend a gel liner. You can start with the LA Girl. They have a black in this. And the reason why I say to start with it is because when you use an angled brush, you get more control with it than with a liquid liner. You know, that brush does be so flexible. It senses your fear and you're very prone to make mistakes. If that is not you, <laughs> then you go, girl. You go. I dip into my brow product. I'm using the Inglot. <laughs> I'm using the Inglot eyeliner gel in number 77. This is the blackest black I've ever come across thus far. So like I said, we want to start with a really, really thin line first if that is your preference. So since we're not doing a wing, we can start from the inner corner. And you know, take your time with it if you have to. And there you have a thin black line. But like I said, I'm gonna go much thicker than this. How you can go thicker, you say? Not too thick, eh? Because like that'll not look cute. Now that both eyes are aligned, now I'm going to move on to the face. So what it is you need to do and need to know, first and foremost, prime your face. Y'all be like, my foundation doesn't last, let us get oily first. Did you prime your face, honey? No, you didn't. What is a primer? Just like how you'd put paint on a house and you prime it first, so that you could get, I think they prime it so that you could get the richness of the paint. In this case, we are priming so that the foundation can adhere to the skin. And sometimes primers has blurring effects where it makes your pores look invisible. Some primers have hydrating effects where if just you have dry skin, it keeps you looking fresh and not patchy. And there are primers that just act as an adhesive for the foundation this is so that the foundation lasts this is so that you don't get oily or you don't look patchy or you don't look like you have gaping holes in your face because your pores are looking so huge under your foundation that is what primers are for use the thing now try it <laughs> i'm going to be using the fenty beauty pro filter primer well, it's a pro filter. It's supposed to make your face look like if it have a filter, right? So that means it's supposed to make you look smooth. And there are some primers, or most primers, that you can just wear by itself. Like this Fenty Beauty is a primer I would wear by itself. I'm going to reach back for my Maybelline foundation. Now to ensure that your face is well blended, I apply it in sections. I'll do one half of the face and then the next half. Or I might do cheek to nose area and chin and do the same thing to the other side and then do my forehead. Please don't neglect your forehead. It's not cute. 
when everywhere else looks properly covered and your forehead looking like it's struggling. I use a brush to apply it. I don't like to get my hands dirty, or at least I try not to get my hands dirty. I understand there are some things that calls for your hands to get involved, but if I can avoid it and still do a great job, then I'm definitely going to do it. Y'all can use a brush to apply your foundation. I use a sponge right now, but listen to me. Brush was like my best friend. I don't know, I just, I just happened to get in. When everybody was on the sponge trend, like, I was still like, oh my god, I think brushes does such an amazing job that I never wanted to part with it. And then eventually, I don't know, I just started using sponge. The sponge is somehow, there is a disadvantage that the sponge sometimes tend to soak up most of the product, but it definitely gives you an airbrush finish. finish. Meanwhile, a brush does not soak up the product, so you definitely get to carry it wherever you want it to go. And it does not go down into the bristles and get lost. Please don't forget any nook and crannies. No, it says you, you go to one and you can see all you have no foundation. Nah, that ain't cute, sis. You can't yawn in public because people go see all where you miss. And make sure and blend past your jawline. We don't want to see a circle on your face either. They're not cute, so. If you have a little five head like me, don't neglect it. Show it some love too. You've been hit by, you've been shot by, smooth criminal. Mm -hmm. Only smooth because my foundation looks smooth. We're coming along nicely, I must say. I'm going to go back in and use the same concealer that I used to highlight under my brows and to clean up under my brows, under my eyes. You want a concealer that is a shade lighter so that way it can conceal as well as highlight. I come down the side of my nose just a little bit and then extend following the eyes so that we can get it to look snatched up, you know, like we got a face left. If you get a concealer that is too bright, you're gonna look scary. And you don't want to be looking like it have a whole ghost resting underneath your eyes. And not cute. It's not cute. Repeat after me. It's not cute. Thank you. The reason why I don't blend the concealer out in parts like I would have done with the foundation is because I want my concealer to get a bit tacky. So that way it sits on the skin and it don't blend away. If you have a small brush that fits underneath your eyes, you can do that or you can use your beauty sponge. Time for a blend. I tend to blend the smallest areas first because if I blend a large area and then I come to a small area, then I'm, I'm going to make the small area look much bigger than I anticipated or planned or wanted. My forehead is the next small area because I want my five head to actually look like a four head and then when I contour it, it might be a three head, you know? And listen to me, Ellie Gill Pro Conceal, it blends effortlessly as well. It's very easy to blend, so it's perfect for beginners. Do always, always go back with your foundation brush or the base of your sponge where you were blending your foundation to go around it to ensure that it blends effortlessly. You don't want to see a circle, a circle, a triangle, tri no. You're not supposed to see the difference. It's supposed to be as gradual as possible, like the gradient, yeah. I also don't want to move the product too much, so I'm just gonna stamp it exactly where it is.
like that. Now I did not add any more foundation to my face. I just used what remained on my beauty sponge. To blend my nose, I used the same crease brush that I used to blend my eyes since it's small, so it would help control how I blend. You can use something smaller if you prefer. And I just dab it, which is exactly what I was doing with the sponge, which is exactly what I do even with a brush. And I keep it right there and then I use the base to blend the sides out. Now it's time for me to set under our eyes. We know there's a million setting powder. There's white, there's banana, there's medium, there's dark. To cater for all skin tones. So because I have a yellow complexion, I use my Derma Blend Illuminating Banana Powder. You don't want something that is too bright because sometimes, most times, setting powder tend to cause flashback and flashbacks are not cute. Trust me, you do not want to see yourself looking crazy in a photo with flashes, okay? Especially if your setting powder is causing flashback. So what I do is just focus on setting the concealer. I don't bake. Baking is a thing of the past. And I make sure that it's not packed in one area. I make sure the brush has it evenly and then I just buff it in. Just like I would my concealer, just like I would my foundation. Because we just want to set it in. You want it to look as airbrushed as possible. And when you drag, you're going to move your concealer. You're going to move your foundation. We're not about that life. So if you dip and you find it has too much, knock off the excess. And pat. Do make sure that you've eliminated all creases before setting your eyes or setting your forehead or setting your nose or your cupid's bow or your chin because you don't want to set creases. In my early days, I end up setting creased areas and listen to me, I look way older than my age. You don't want to do that at all, at all, at all. Next, I'm going to set the rest of my face because all I set was the concealer. The foundation could still move if it is, I do something to it by mistake. So I'm gonna use my face powder just to set the rest of my face. Some people use their setting powder to set the rest of your face and that is quite fine. I buff it in the same way or I use circular motion, but I do it very lightly. I'm not heavy handed at all because I do not want to move my foundation. Sometimes I even go over exactly where it is I would have set my concealer with my face powder. Next, we're gonna go on to contouring. Because this is a beginner makeup video, we're gonna do powder contouring. We're not gonna do cream contouring. And I believe that when it is I use my face powder on my face, it makes powder contouring so much easier because I get to blend it way more effortless than if I had just stamped it onto my foundation, which would have been still sticky since it's a liquid foundation. I reach into my BH contour palette. You all can use even a face powder that is two shades or one shade darker than you to contour with. That is completely fine. You all don't need to get a contour palette. So I just stamp it right which part I want to contour. I don't go too low down because you don't want your face to look long. So I just come right here. Then I use circular motion because I want it to look blown out. I do not want it to look too concentrated in one area. And as much as I want it to look blown out, I'm not coming down with it, eh? I do the same thing with the forehead area. Circular motion. Now 
now you start to see some color come back into the face because when you don't contour or add any kind of blush you definitely look flat and that is not cute don't forget your jawline some people leave it out it's fine i used to leave it out now i do not leave it out and what remains on the brush i just stamp it to the side of my nose and because it's a big brush, it's not going to look too harsh. I stamp whatever remains. The reason why I use just the sides of my contour brush and what remains on it is because we don't want to get too technical. This is a beginner makeup tutorial. And to ensure that the nose still looking a tad bit contoured, I would use the same brush that I used to blend out the concealer and go back in the middle there with it, just to re-highlight it. Next, I'm going to apply some blush. Some people don't like blush, some people do. This just brings some color into the face as well. So to get your blush, you would smile a little, make sure your cheeks are showing, and then you just dab into it. I use the same contour brush because, you know, this is beginner makeup. You don't wanna have to get 30 different brushes just to do one look. So we improvise. Where I set underneath my eyes, I use it as my face powder, and where I contour, I use it as a blush. But I make sure I apply the blush last. Make sure it blends. You do want to blend it into your contour. You don't want to see three lines on your face, the contour line, the blush line, and the highlighter line. No, it's not cute. Like I said, gradient. Gradient is important. It's muy importante. Next, I'm gonna take my highlighter brush and I'm gonna use this Revlon Peach Glow Highlighter. I've had this forever too. If y'all would have seen a couple ep episodes back on my YouTube channel, I actually used this highlighter as an eyeshadow. Y'all can check that out if you haven't seen it yet. So I'm just gonna take the gold one in it and then just pat that right above the cheek area just on the cheekbone is your cheekbone yeah 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 i think so i use circular motion and i make sure i come a little bit into the blush as well the reason why i really love this highlighter even though it's reasonable it's drugstore owned is that it does not look like it sits on the skin. It looks like it comes from within, you know? Sometimes if I want to get a dewy look, I reach for this highlighter. And I just put it in all the places, like my chin, my nose, my forehead. This highlighter does that for me. Because I want my nose to still look as though I properly contoured it, I would get a very fine detail brush and I dip into the highlighter and I just place a dot onto my nose like that and I use my finger. This is why I definitely use my finger to warm up the product and help blend it out so it does not look too harsh. Then I use the detailed brush again and I make that exclamation point <laughs> and just like that we can set our face I'm gonna use my Mario Badescu another issue you all want to know why it is your face looking dry and hard after you spend two hours trying to put it on is because you don't set your face honey set your face when you do and it does not look cute okay your face looks dry and you don't want it to look so you want it to look like if you woke up like this so to do that you need to drown your face in setting spray <laughs> another thing i do too is that i spray it sometimes to the back of my sponge and i buff it back into the skin because you truly want your skin to look like if it was born contoured, it was born highlighted, it was born with a three head and not a five head. When you set your face, it truly lets everything sit into the skin so beautifully, so effortlessly. People can't tell where you start or where you stop. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying some people just age out on their face. I definitely go back in and I press 
that baby in. I'm playing with that. And look at that. Flawless, flawless beginner makeup. Only, I don't know, like, the redness in my eye is not going away. The next thing we're going to do now is our eyelashes. For those persons who may not be comfortable with eyelashes, y'all can do a thin line now, like what I would have shown previously, and then add three, two, three coats of mascara, and you're good to go. And for those who are kind of extra like myself, y'all can put on lashes. As you all know, my eyelash situation is not a normal one, but a cheat code for those who would be interested in wearing eyelashes is to apply your glue just above your lash line and then when it gets tacky rest your lashes onto it that doesn't apply to me my lashes curl all the way back and touch my lid i place the mirror underneath me look down rest it above Some persons tend to apply mascara onto their own lashes before they put on the falsies. I don't do that because my lashes are so curly. I don't want them to stay. I'm trying to get them to decurl so that I can place your lashes on. So that is why I don't do that. But what I do is go over with my mascara wand just to make sure that it merges well and that it does not look ashy <laughs> ashy meaning it does not have all the foundation concealer eyeshadow and everything else that i might have put on it while i was doing my makeup i'm gonna line my waterline and then i'm gonna put on some mascara on my lower lash line and then we'll do the lips <laughs> i think i want to put some concealer on my lips yeah actually i don't want this shade the shade is too peel. I'm gonna use this shade. This is golden. Let me line my lips with Spice Rum from Boston Bougie. A little bit of chestnut from the same brand. It's because I don't want it to look too, too dark. Chestnut is already the darkest shade. Don't be afraid to line on your lips, eh? Don't just go inside. You have lips, honey. You show it off. People spend money for your lips. And then I'm gonna pop some gloss over it. And just like that, the look is complete. I think this is a beginner's makeup. If you all think you'll need something simpler than this, <laughs> then comment down below and let me know. If it is you like this look, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions, you all can leave them in the comment section down below and I can answer them in a subsequent video, okay? Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this look as much as I did. I think it looks gorgeous now seeing everything come to life, my edges laid slight, you know, face set, brows snatched, lashes on, lip gloss popping. I think we're good to go. So until next time, bye.